All right, what is up, people of the internet? Welcome back to another episode of the Waveform Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Marquez. I'm Andrew. And I'm David. And Adam and Ellis are here, but they may be replaced by AI soon, so just say hi to them at least one more time. We'll have, a, we'll have a story about that. We'll figure out if that's real or not. Hi, Adam. Um, hi, Adam. Hi, Ellis. Hi, Ellis. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Ellis. Uh, we also have uh, two more wildly overdue tech features. This seems to be a theme. But also uh, the Lucid SUV, a little bit of a quick thoughts on seeing that start to get teased. And then, of course, we have the shoe launch to talk about. Mm-hmm. Uh, sort of just the experience of being on the other side of where I normally am, which yeah. is embargo happens, I publish my review, all the other reviews come out and product managers are starting to freak out because of all the reviews. This time, I am the product manager and all the reviews come out at the same time, or at least all of the people's thoughts on the thing that I made. And it's just the very different feeling. So we'll talk about that. Uh, first, though, we have Galaxy S24 rumors. Um, this one is actually interesting because it's whenever we talk about batteries, mm-hmm. it's always incremental. I've said this a thousand times, but what was a good battery life in a phone uh, 10 years ago? Like, oh, all day would be pretty nice. Now what's a good battery life in a phone in 2023? All day all would be nice. <laughs> yeah. So, But the phones do so much more that it's like, I think we forget or we don't really appreciate how much better batteries have gotten, where now we have literally 5,000 milliamp hour batteries in pocket-sized yeah. phones, and that was unheard of a long time ago. Uh, so this new rumor is Galaxy S24 may use stacked a new stacked battery technology that's borrowed from EVs. Um, which may give us maybe a 10% improvement in battery mm-hmm. density, which, again, is just incremental. 10% is 10%. But, again, going from 5,500 to 6,000 milliamp hours is more battery for us. So I'll take it. So it's that's kind of cool to see. It's at the point where, like, batteries are big enough that a 10% on number wise like going from 5000 to 5500 is like legitimately something that's pretty decent yeah like like tech nerds online will be like 5500 is way better than five. like that's a good number jump. yeah, yeah. like so smart watches often have like a 170 milliamp hour battery yeah so, so. like 10 percent of that's gonna feel like look like nothing but like yeah we're at the point now we're 10 percent it's a solid chunk. And then bat- phone screens and processors are getting more efficient. So you add and 10% brighter. more battery. Yeah. All of that with yeah. more efficient yeah. components. And maybe you'll get all day plus a half day. That is kind of nice. Some phones are capable of yeah, that. Yeah. It's kind of just like we smart phones are so capable that I much more appreciate the efficiency gains than mm-hmm. the peak power gains. Cause like mm-hmm. a phone can do everything that I want it to. And in those crazy extreme scenarios of like maxing out frame rate in certain games, people love the benchmarks and like, Oh, let me see three more, five more FPS. Cool. But I want to see like Snapdragon eight gen two having better standby time, being able to throttle down faster when it knows it can LTPO display is going all the way down to one Hertz. Like I want to, I want my phone to last yeah. even though it's super powerful. So, yeah, give me more battery. That sounds great. Yeah, and just clarify, this is different than, like, the one plus two separate batteries that are, like, just to increase charging. This is actually the way the battery cells are stacked inside of the battery. So you're getting 10% more battery out of the same size. I do wonder, though, do we think that necessarily means going the 10% more or leaving more room for components or smaller sizes of phones, right. bigger batteries and smaller? Bigger phones with smaller batteries. Well, it's supposed to potentially come out in the S24 Ultra first, which I doubt they will make smaller. Did it? Si- More battery. It said that, right? Or a bigger camera module. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's true. <laughs> true. Who doesn't need five more macro cameras? On I mean, the S24 Ultra, I could see them going with a 1.0 type sensor finally. Yeah. So if that's the case, then they are going to need more room for that anyway. Yeah. I For some reason, as much as I would like the 10% more battery capacity, I feel like we're just going to get same battery capacity something else in it and yeah that's like often that. what they do when they come up with it's these new improvements they're like More we're not making it better but <laughs> yeah but we, we use that extra room to put in a better haptic motor and more cooling and yeah. uh, a little bit extra something something else yeah bigger cameras more decks yeah <laughs> <laughs> it is funny in product decisions so now i'm thinking like a product manager because we just did this whole uh this whole shoe thing every product is just a a, a culmination of trade-offs basically so you can decide to just use that improved technology to have more battery in your phone 
But also batteries are these really complex things that require insulation and cooling. And you also have to think about charging speed. And if they charge faster, then they take up more space because of the cooling required to charge faster. And so do you use that improved density to have the same size battery, but that charges faster and takes up a little more space? Mm. Or if you're Samsung, you're like 45 watts is okay. We don't really feel like chasing the 100, 200 watts of Xiaomi or whatever. We'll keep it 45 watts, but we'll use extra density for more capacity instead. There's all, there's a ton of choices yeah. you can make. Yeah. And at the end of the day, we'll get the phone and we'll review the choices they made. But yeah, I think I'll take 10% more battery. I just want capacity. I just want phones to I, last longer. I agree with you. Like you said, like our phones still do so many things. They're already fast enough. They're already doing all this stuff. Just like make it last longer. I mean, and take this technology and then also like we've talked about being okay with phones being a little thicker to... Mm -hmm. Go up to the camera bump, please. So exactly. now, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Add, add that extra battery plus being able to jam more battery into it. Yeah, like, we could be looking at six, seven thousand milliamp hour battery. Like the uh, the Xiaomi thirteen Ultra. I was bring up that design. Yeah, if can you have it with you? I don't. Should I grab it? Grab it. Okay, yeah, I'll be right. Back. I have not seen it yet. Yeah, let me show you. One eternity later. No. Oh. Whoa. Whoa! I got it. <laughs> Ellis thought you actually fell. <laughs> Here's the phone. Uh, okay, the yeah. Xiaomi thirteen Ultra has this shape you're going to talk about it it's kind of yeah. like two levels of uh thickness exactly so for the audio listeners it's not just like a flat back on the back you know how the galaxy s21 had that sort of like smooth granular lift to get up to the camera bump yeah this does sort of the same thing but then there's also the camera bump it's huge. but the reason is because it has a 1.0 type sensor so they need to have a bigger image circle to project onto the sensor and so you've got this like lip that's on top of the actual back of the it's phone. It's the entire top half of the phone. I, yeah. So yeah. why? So my thing is like, if you're going to do stacked batteries, yeah. then you don't even have to do this lip. You can just make it just make slightly thicker. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Which I mean, I think it it's cool mm -hmm. how it looks, but if they're just like they can make the phone thicker, people are not. Gonna it is it. interesting. Like I do think they could just keep that the whole way out. My guess is their their reasoning for this is underneath that lip, it's thinner, which is mostly where your fingers are, so it still feels like a thinner phone. Although that still looks like a it, thick phone. It's it not, is a thick. So here's a, here's a yeah, sort yeah. of a thought. Like remember when we had that era of like phones getting thinner and thinner Top and heavy. thinner. Yeah. And that Moto Z came out. Oh and my it was gosh. Like, it was like four. Oh it was some God. ridiculously yeah. thin phone. And there was a little bit of magic to them going on stage and being like, "Look at how razor thin this gadget is." We're clearly trending towards like these impossibly thin devices. And there's a little bit of magic to like how impressive that was. But like, what's the use? But there is that? no use. Yeah. It's just aesthetic. <laughs> exactly. And I think that we kind of realize that there is a point of diminishing Returns. interest in yeah. how thin a phone can be. Yeah. And we got to it. It's like, if it fits in my hand and it's not weirdly weighted and top heavy, it's thin enough. Yeah. I'm not like going around waving around my phone like, look how thin it is. So it's fine. I do feel like the Asus ROG phones are a little thick for Those most are, people. Yeah. But they do have 6,000 milliamp hour batteries. Mm. And I mean... It, they probably only feel thick because regular phones are thinner. So if yeah, we start sure. getting people more used to slightly thicker and thicker phones, like if Apple ever actually released that iPhone for, uh, 15 Ultra, which is not going to happen. <laughs> but if they did and they made it thicker because it had better battery and more rugged and whatever, I feel like people would start to adapt to phones being thicker in general. I mean, I even think some of the last couple generations of iPhones feel a bit thicker just because of the squared off edges. Mm -hmm. So like people are clearly okay with that. Like, Imagine now Apple goes back to having curved edges, but they're the same radius of the squared off edges now, but then the back is just a little bigger and it right. has a bigger battery. Yeah, it would feel exactly the same. for it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. You're literally going to have to do that if you keep making bigger sensors anyway. It's, it's going yeah. to be a thing where you're going to have to either have a bump or you could just add more battery capacity. So at this yeah. point, just add the battery capacity. This phone has, this 13 Ultra has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. It's wow. great. It's a really good phone and a really good display and really good cameras and all that. It's all fits in the phone, but if yeah, they you, stacked it. The, you, you could, could be six thousand. They could have probably fit like fifty five hundred. The more points. you look at it, the more interesting it is. There's so many extra lines going on here. Yeah, like even all the way down to the non stacked edge, the, yeah. the thinner part. It's still we'll get some uh, like, B roll in there for those yeah. of you. Who are like, it's what a, are you talking about? Yeah, audio listeners, it's a pretty aesthetically good looking phone. I like it a lot. It's yeah. very different. It is literally top heavy when you hold it. The 12 Ultra was also really pretty, so I'm glad that they kept up with that. The, well, the 12 Ultra <laughs> was a unique looking phone. <laughs> I, I like wouldn't that. say pretty. It was pretty brutalist, wasn't it? 
Uh, Am I picturing the same phone? I think Xiaomi you're thinking Kino, of a different phone. S Ultra. Holy moly, this gets too much light. <laughs> oh, the 12 S Ultra. I'm thinking of the 11 Ultra. Yeah, you're thinking of the 11 Ultra. That one was Yeah, ugly. the 11 Ultra was the square yeah. shelf the, like, on the back of the phone. Yeah, that, one, that was a situation. I wouldn't call that pretty. Okay, the 12 Ultra. Yeah, it's better looking. I like how 3.2X is the second lens. Yeah. It's not just 3X, it's 3.2. Yeah, very specific. Yeah, okay, we're a little that. off track. <laughs> but uh, wow, this gets so much light that it's actually overexposed. That does not happen very often on phones. Yeah, crazy. I mean, we're in a, a very well lit podcast studio. So yeah, Perfectly I'm gonna lit. steal this after yeah, we review it, just so you know. Okay, so be careful. <laughs> fair, fair. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I'm hoping S24 Ultra gets a battery bump. The stack battery tech seems like pretty cool. Also, the fact that it comes from EVs, like EVs, the number one thing we're trying to do with those is get more better capacity. range, more capacity. That's where the development and the front lines of like battery chemistry yeah. is happening a lot. So we love to see it. Yeah, this we is used in the uh, Audi e-tron Q8. Is it I out? I think it's out. Starting at 74K. Oh, I've seen that. So that has a 285 mile range, so. That's not great. <laughs> it's not go. great. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're good at converting battery could, to range. I yeah, could but rant for a long time. It does have a 114 kilowatt hour battery, though, yeah. which I think is... I'm not good at battery yeah, hours on like, EVs. That's a fairly large battery. That's fairly large. There's like three main factors when it comes to like determining how good your range will be. One is literally how big of a battery cell can you fit in? Like how much density can you fit? Which the answer is 114 for this one. Mm -hmm. Two is how well can you convert that energy to driving power? You know, mm -hmm. drivetrain efficiency. Electric drivetrains are pretty efficient, but it's still variable. And three is... Uh, how aerodynamically efficient and just space efficient can your car be? So if you build a new EV from the ground up, you can generally fit a larger battery and, and go further on a charge. Where if you just put a battery into a car that's built to be a gas car, you yeah. won't be able to fit as much battery in there. Yeah. So all these things combine. I'm sure Audi's somewhere in the middle on that spectrum, but yeah, we see a we see a lot of that. I'll I will, I'll save that rant for another day. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we we also have uh, a little bit of AI podcast editing yeah, to talk about. Did, I think I showed you guys both saw me post this on Slack yeah. the other day, right? The yeah. AI podcast editing tool. I was probably in Iceland. It was last night. I was probably asleep. It was probably your birthday. Wow. I forgot to mention that. True. Everyone wish David a happy birthday. I'm basically in the dust now. That makes me feel terrible. <laughs> and, um, but uh, so it's like, I'll explain it to David and the listeners um, because Adam and Ellis definitely both saw this. And are a little, are sweating <laughs> we are over very there. aware. Um, <laughs> there's this new tool called Autopod, which is an Adobe Premiere plugin. And it can essentially. That name is threatening. <laughs> it's pretty, it's very threatening. And it's very accurate because you can yeah. take your Adobe timeline, sync each separate camera for like a podcast with audio and once it's synced you take open up the plugin label each voice and then it'll essentially go through the entire timeline and cut to whichever camera is currently talking i'm honestly surprised that wasn't already a thing because that doesn't seem like that's that it advanced strikes me as something AI that feature. could get built into premiere tomorrow yeah. if yeah. they started working on it yeah and so it can change the camera cuts and then not only do that if it senses more than one person talking and you have a wide angle it'll switch, it'll to, the switch to the wide That's and cool. just auto cut the whole thing so even if it's not perfect like l losing that and just getting to run it all watch it make yeah. small adjustments here and there yeah that should seems pretty wild we should definitely try, should it. try it i yeah. do wonder if it actually saves time based on adobe <laughs> exporting times afterwards um are you actually getting any faster because you're waiting 10 times longer for an adobe export but Fair. i mean if it makes adam do his like be able to do his job that much faster yeah. then we can just make more stuff it'll we, be way faster because i'll be unemployed so <laughs> <laughs> we make all these jokes but that's obviously not going yeah to adam it's called fun employed adam, way, way too much. we already did like, a, a human skill versus ai thing remember yeah we had so Tim. Tim go up against Dolly. Dolly. And that was early Dolly. And early Dolly. Early. Yeah. Speaking and of, we we are going to be doing something like that soon with a different AI plugin. Ellis is currently working on a video right now, right? Ooh. Yeah. Should we spoil that? Or just don't tease, spoil too much. Tease, tease it. The, tease the concept. Here, here's what I'll say is the initial draft of the video was going to be Ellis versus AI as far as like audio restoration and cleanup and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I got started writing it. I started playing with the tools and uh, I've, I've already uh, lost 
um, we've we've put <laughs> out three videos now that I did with AI, and and no one even said anything or noticed. So, uh, hmm. so I don't know if the competition. We're still doing the video. The video is like yeah, chugging yeah, yeah. along. The script's almost done. Yeah. Um, but it's not going to be the. As, I'm not going to go head to head like Tim did. Because, it's really uh, interesting. <laughs> it's it's also because the how perceivable the result is is very different based on the medium. Yeah. Like Tim is creating an entire new image from scratch and it's very visual and you get to look at this thing that Dolly made and that Tim made where if we're just tweaking or editing the way something sounds to a lot of people that's more subtle and so it could pass more yeah. easily. And I, and I could probably point out and be like, Oh, did you hear that? See that? That's the AI. But I think, I mean, it's it's proven, you know, we get tens of thousands of comments on every video mm -hmm. and uh, and no one was like, this sounds different. Yeah. I mean, that, that is a good so, test. I think that's kind of what we did. Mariah probably edited like three main channel videos before because we don't announce new hires yeah. for three months. I think she had three full videos on the channel and not a single person noticed an editing difference. Yeah. And that is like the perfect test to be like, Wow, this worked really well. I do want to say, Adobe, if you're listening, I'm looking dead into the camera. If you're listening, give me access to Adobe Podcast. I've signed up for the wait list on every email I have. I'm out of emails. Just just give me it. Just make more emails. We need to try it. Uh, we definitely need to try it. Yeah, I'm trying to make this video. Dog. Dog. Yeah. Well, between Autopod and this audio editing stuff, if you are a, a white male in your 30s and you're sad that you don't have a podcast like all your friends do, don't worry, man. It's going to get real easy real soon. I just saw a really great tweet. I want to find it because it's we keep talking about how like AI tools are like borderline replacing humans. And then here's this video uh, that I believe was created entirely from AI. It's a pizza commercial. Oh, no. And it's, <laughs> it's written by AI, voiced by AI and video by AI. Is the text by AI? Everything. The In text, the whole oh, video really? is by AI. As far as I can tell, it feels that way anyway. Okay. <laughs> and the caption is, AI is now indistinguishable from reality. It's hard to believe, but this ad was AI generated. It's not real. The future is here. I'm going to play it for you guys. Right. Oh, God. It already oh looks God. like the Will Smith eating spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> the guy's eyes are just dead. Are you ready for best pizza of life? <laughs> Bring friends down to Pepperoni Hug Spot. <laughs> <laughs> Our chefs make pizza with heart and special touch. That guy's arm was on Cheese, fire. Pepperoni, vegetable, and more secret things. <laughs> Need delivery? Pizzas come fast. Knock, knock, who's there? Pizza magic. <laughs> Eat pepperoni, hot <laughs> spot pizza. Your tummy say thank you. Your mouth say, mmm. Pepperoni it's a hug Pizza Hut building. It's like family. Yep. It's the Pizza Hut font. It's like family, but <laughs> with more cheese. I do like that as a tagline. <laughs> It's, I like, are, you, are you ready for Bet's Pizza of Life? <laughs> it's pretty hilarious. Was it, wait, what was the name of it? Pepperoni Hug Spot? Yes. Yeah. That's a band name right there. That's <laughs> that's a jam band in Brooklyn. Pepperoni sure. Hug Spot. We'll, I would this one, totally do we'll that. put this one in the show notes. But the idea is, yeah, the AI tools aren't like full on replacing people at what people do. But as far as helping people do what people do, they're really good. Yeah, ultimately, we make the joke about like, taking over Adam and Ellis's job, but it ultimately just makes it way easier. And then there's more stuff we can do with the free time. Yeah, I could just yeah. tell jokes. Like what did one dinner plate say to the other dinner plate? What? What? Dinner is on me. <laughs> That's pretty good. Can I ask you guys an AI question? <laughs> I'm just out of curiosity. So I've been do using chat GPT for a lot of researchy assistant-y sort of business. Uh -huh. I've been running into this problem lately where I ask it a question and it responds very confidently. Yep. Like, yep, Welcome. that's the answer. And then I say, hey, can you send me your sources for that? Mm, nope. Well, it'll send me links and they're all broken. <laughs> oh. Like all of them. All so the they're time. generated links? I, yeah. I'm, I, and yeah, it's not oh. like I can never even find the correct link. Like it's almost like it's making up URLs. That's it possible. It is. Wait, yeah. what you, like you click the link and it goes. I to... get 404 on the Verge's oh, website. Okay. And yeah. then if you put the keywords in the URL it in, the search, in the Verge's search box, nothing comes yeah. up. There's nothing on Wayback. Are you using Machine. ChatGPT? Indeed. I yeah. If you were using Bing, it would cite sources. ChatGPT does not have the ability okay. to cite sources. Because when I use. I guess I should use Bing then. Because when I tried it with Bard, Bard was just like, I'm not giving you sources. It yeah. was just like, no. Bard, like, <laughs> a, I've only gotten Bard to give me a source once. 
Yeah, very uh, few times has Bard given me, and that's damn, when okay. it chooses to give me. I thought me their a whole yeah. thing was to post sources. Uh, Bing, I think Bing, Bing, Bing and is. Bard were supposed Bing to. Bing is Bard every is. single time you do a Bing search, it gives yeah. you three plus sources. Wait, Bard does not have that. N it, no. no, it always <laughs> offers to what? Google search whatever your query was and rate positively or negatively the response you got, but it very rarely actually decides yeah. to sometimes give you a source yeah, or two randomly. I've gotten it once. Well, uh, guys, I'm. Uh, I'm downloading Microsoft Edge. It's happening. <laughs> I yeah. know. That happened to me too. Yeah. I, I honestly, you should you need to be. <laughs> it sounds like you got a disease. <laughs> yeah, it happened to me too. It, happened, it could happen to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should be really careful for what you, like, for information and fact-based things, don't trust no, it. No, I know. I was hoping it would, it would just sort of, like, point me in the right direction yeah you know or, and like scrape the internet for like the one use bing use bing well do i need to have edge yeah right now yeah for the chat feature yeah 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 it happened to me too <laughs> <laughs> it'll happen to you <laughs> do you know where your kids are <laughs> <laughs> they're on microsoft edge <laughs> oh, god oh, jimmy <laughs> that's too many toolbars <laughs> <laughs> okay speaking of things that happened way too late uh this is kind of a theme no yeah. this is remember last week we had what would you, you phrase ago. it as it a, was it was the most overdue tech feature yes ever and it was print screen being the snippet tool yes, sure. throwing into the snippet tool i love that you printed out your mom's text i did it mariah printed oh, mariah. it out for me it was <laughs> so funny this year uh. this week we have an even more overdue tech yes, feature. I think yeah. so. Two of them, actually. Two. two. That are legitimately a decade after they should have happened. Yeah. I'm not exaggerating. When I say a decade, I mean yeah. actually 10 years after they should have happened. Yeah. The first one. At least. The first one. Google Authenticator adding sync. Now, just for those of you who don't know, who are unaware of how bad, good, but bad Google Authenticator is, lots of waves of please use an authenticator app have happened over the internet's history where you realize, oh, SMS two-factor is better Bad. than not two-factor, but really easily sort of hackable, socially engineered. You can kind of get through that. Uh, and so we recommend you use an authenticator app. Yeah. And for years, I've used Google Authenticator. And the problem with Google Authenticator is you can only sign into your Google Authenticator app with your Google account on one phone at a time. The worst possible thing ever for yeah. tech reviewers. Not bad for yes. regular people, but if you're a tech reviewer who uses no. maybe two phones during the course of the year, but this and is you accidentally like stop using one phone and you yeah. can't log into your accounts, it's a pretty big It's deal. also terrible for regular people yeah. because when you upgrade your phone, if you forget to de-authenticate it. Or if you break your phone. Or if you break your yeah. phone. Or, if you're your just or lose your phone. Yeah. yeah. I've heard of a lot of people who like lost their phone or broke their phone and it was just like, welp. Yeah. GG. You, you just lost every account <laughs> that you had <laughs> that was supposed to be authenticated through Google Authenticator. Hi, yeah. it me. That happened. <laughs> yeah. Adam no longer ever has yeah, yeah. access to Uber ever again. Yeah. So... Yeah. They, I think I genuinely believe that there's like uh, someone who runs some department at Google who just forgot that they had an authenticator app and they just went, oh yeah, we, should, we have an authenticator or they, like, app. They what if sent we... the feature code in for review and just like forgot to review it and found it yeah. on their like old, the, their old desktop folder on their computer and they're like, oh, I was supposed to push this 10 years they, ago. They like open and, up well, an old laptop like, oh yeah, I had a feature thing I was going to work on. And now Google Authenticator has added sync. So you can sign into Google Authenticator from your Google account on more than one yeah. device at the same time. And I just want to know, not just 10 years, Google Authenticator was created September 20th, 2010. So 13 years. <laughs> That's a long time. You know when Android was made? 2008? <laughs> yeah. Not <laughs> 2008, very close. 2009? So, so, so this is legitimately one of the most overdue features ever. I actually switched to Authy because I got so tired of like not having the ability to just open whatever phone and log in. Uh, and so, Google, you're just a little too late, just a little too late huh. to have me keep using it. But you're probably like literally a decade too late for a lot of other As people. a moron who doesn't like change, I'm still using it. So this weirdly paid still? off for me. It'll be <laughs> great. It'll be much safer for you. Yeah. You can drop your phone in the toilet and not get logged out of every <laughs> account you own, yeah. which is great. Uh, so that's the one. Google Authenticator adding sync. Yeah. The other <sighs> is... WhatsApp, <laughs> renowned crowd favorite WhatsApp. Yeah. 
uh, now supports. Do you use it? I I do use WhatsApp yeah. uh, on one phone because I have some contacts that use WhatsApp. Uh, mm -hmm. It now supports multi-device login. I'm going to scoot over so David could have the whole I just camera want you to, for this one. Again, <laughs> picture this. Picture this. If you logged into WhatsApp on one phone and then you, let's say, had another phone, you couldn't log in to WhatsApp on that phone without booting yourself out of WhatsApp on the other phone. Yeah. One at a time. You you miss. And then also it. Uh, you have to back up all of your chats. Yeah, or they disappear. Or they disappear. So if you don't back it up to your Google Drive, because mm -hmm. it's not even through your WhatsApp account that it gets backed up, it gets backed up to Google uh -oh. Drive. Then you have to download all of your WhatsApp messages onto your new device. Yeah. And it was single device only, plus like one web browser or something. And that didn't work if you were switching ecosystems. So if you were going from Android right. to iOS... I you think just they just it. made it start working. <laughs> yeah, for recently. Yeah, so recently they've been WhatsApp's been adding a lot of features that they should have had a long time ago. Um, but I just got I just gotta say, is the most frustrating thing for me in the universe <laughs> mm -hmm. that WhatsApp has become the de facto messaging app for the planet. Is it just because it's a bad app? It's many things. It's bad. It's many things. It's, it's bad. really bad. Yeah. Number one. <laughs> Wait, can I pause you right there? Yeah. This is going to be the most engaged <laughs> podcast we've. Uh, <laughs> I know. Dumping on WhatsApp, making fun of Microsoft Edge. I can read all the comments and we're not even at the first. I'm just like, yet. if you've <laughs> ever used a, a a separate messaging client like Telegram that is like insanely feature rich, works on as many devices as possible. Syncs well. Syncs well, like has a desktop client and a web client. The, the thing, I mean, specifically for tech reviewers, WhatsApp was extremely terrible because you would switch phones and you would forget to back up your chats yeah. and then you would just lose everything. We, we actually, a couple of years ago, like a bunch of tech reviewers, we all had this like thing where we told all the PR people, hey, we're not using WhatsApp anymore because we keep losing all our messages. We're on Telegram now. If you want to contact us, go to Telegram. And it actually worked. Nice. Yeah. So I have a I have like a lot of people on Telegram now. So uh, join Telegram because it's great. Sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but OK, so number one was that it's bad, right? Yep. Number two, it's owned by Meta. Like, yeah. come on. Small detail. <sighs> Oh, yeah. It's it's uh yeah I I so I use obviously a bunch of different phones during the year which is not normal but I have an Android phone in my right pocket and an iPhone in my left pocket and as we know iPhone Android phones like we go through a lot of them as we review them and we switch yeah. our whole life over to them and it would be incredibly annoying to refresh my entire WhatsApp history every time I review a new Android phone so I keep WhatsApp on my iPhone because at least that phone's in my pocket for a whole year before I test yeah. the next iPhone yeah 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 but still every new iPhone. Gotta just back have it to go through this whole process and i didn't back it up i lost my chats every time because yep. i just like get the new phone set it up and it just sign into everything <laughs> so i sign into whatsapp and it's fresh and then the other one goes bye and then it just loses everything yep. so these are these are overdue features i would say on a scale of the most overdue google authenticator uh, google yeah. authenticator <laughs> yes. is we can all agree on probably that, right? at the top of the mm -hmm. list yeah uh then you know probably a toss up between print screen and whatsapp <laughs> i feel like print print screen might be longer overdue but but i just can't windows believe shift s was there the whole time i'm just a yeah. moron so maybe the whatsapp is a more important <laughs> <laughs> I think WhatsApp is the more important feature. Update. Yeah, and yeah. it's up to four devices, so that's yes. at least better. Yeah. Better. I fully understand that it, this is a much bigger problem for like tech reviewers who switch phones a lot. Yes, but still, um, and it's just a it's a it's a numbers thing. The amount of people that ha have everyone else on WhatsApp have everyone else on WhatsApp, and that's just the thing. It's just the way it is. Yeah. Sometimes. So anyway, yeah. get off WhatsApp. Get your family off WhatsApp. Good luck. You're not going to. That's okay. It's going to take way more effort than you thought, and you're just going to end up using WhatsApp anyway. I know. Sorry. Yeah. I just use SMS. Just use RCS. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that's where we'll take a break. <laughs> we'll take a break. We'll do a trivia question. Just use WhatsApp. And we'll, we'll be back after that. But let's do some trivia. Oh. Back in person for some trivia. Mm -hmm. You missed the lights, didn't you? I did. Okay. All right. To make myself even more irrelevant, uh, ChatGPT wrote this question. <laughs> Wait, nice. that means the answer is not. No, I fact checked it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. uh, wow. Let me rephrase that. ChatGPT wrote this question, and then I rewrote it to make it, you know, in my fun game show personality. That's mm. the synergy we need with AI. Thank you. <laughs> Um, in 1994, IBM combined the PDA and the mobile phone into one device, creating what is widely considered to be the first smartphone. 
On top of having a 4.7-inch touchscreen, it also had email, fax, and pager capabilities. What was the name of this device? Fax? That threw me off. 1994 is crazy, but No, 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 94. 94, yeah. Oh, I thought you said 84. 94 is a long time ago. (laughs) Yeah. All right, and with that, we're going to break... Support for today's episode comes from Shopify. Selling things can be complicated, even if it's just a t-shirt. And I say that from personal experience because we just finished an incredibly detailed collab on a shoe, which took like two years, which is much longer than the typical uh, creation process for something we make here at the studio. Way longer than what we do, yeah. So it it was a really rewarding thing, but it took a while. Luckily for me, selling merch is very much a part-time gig, uh, but if your whole job is to sell stuff, then you need a commerce platform that you trust. Shopify is packed with industry-leading tools that give you complete control over your business and your brand without having to learn any new skills like design or code. It covers every sales channel from an in-person POS system to an all-in-one e-commerce platform. It even lets you sell across social media market places. So if you get stuck, there's also 24-7 help and an extensive business course library. So sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash waveform, all lowercase. So go to shopify.com slash waveform to take your business to the next level today. That's shopify.com slash waveform today. (laughs) All right, we're back. Let's talk about a an EV. Well, it's a it's a bit of a tease of an EV. It's the Lucid Gravity SUV. We were just talking to Andrew about the stealth wrap that they put on these things when they're like teasing it, but they don't want to show you what it looks like mm-hmm. yet. So they wrap it in like a stealth wrap. And the idea is to mask some of the lines and the new things. So when we saw the the new Tesla facelift, for example, they'd actually wrap up the front and the mm-hmm. back. So you don't see what's new, but you know they're testing something new. This one is just like, they're rolling it around with testing. It literally says like, follow us, Lucid Motors <laughs> yeah. on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, we kind of know that they're working on an SUV. Yeah, so we knew they were working on an SUV and Lucid came out and said, you might start seeing some of their testing because they're on public roads testing it now. Sure. Um, and these are some spy shots, whatever you want to call them. Someone caught it on a road. It looks like a very rural road somewhere. I posted like a whole teaser. Is Maybe this is that then. Um, it, <laughs> it looks very spy shotty though because they're not, great photos and they're kind of tilted but um but yeah the wrap on it is really not hiding any lines and has a big follow us at lucid motors with like a facebook page and a twitter page but uh i first thoughts on this i think it looks really good i think these photos yeah it it really looks like a taller lucid air i mean the air had an aesthetic already which was very squat and now it looks tall and it looks more natural to be taller like an SUV. Yeah, and I think if you haven't seen this photo yet, but you know what the Lucid Air looks like, that's a great way to describe it. But once I saw this, I more want to say that the Lucid Air looks like a squished version of the Lucid Gravity because I think the Lucid <laughs> Gravity looks way better. Mm. Like I think Lucid's design style fits better in this taller SUV form factor than the yeah. smaller. I. What do you guys think? Like We've talked about the Lucid Air I love it. Hayato says it's the worst designed car like in the world. He absolutely hates wow. it. I think it looks good. I dig it. I think Hayato's wrong. It's different for sure. The air. We can make fun of him when he's not in the room <laughs> with us. Yeah. The air is, uh, I, it, it can it's grow different. on you. It definitely mm-hmm. doesn't look like other EVs. I don't love the two-tone. And some of their colorways Agreed. are pretty Buick, you know, like beige. Mm-hmm old school i think of the like sebring because with the like soft top convertible yeah i think they're trying to be more like maybach two-tone and like iconic in their own way but ev so you know it's unique obviously i I agree i think this this taller version looks better as an suv i just know it's going to be expensive Mm -hmm. because it's a lucid and this is what they do so like the if you just take the equivalent tesla model s every lucid air that matches is like 30 percent more expensive so actually even more right now a plaid is 105 grand and a gt performance is 180 grand oh my god and the sapphire that's not even out yet is 250 grand so if you're going to compare this to a model x which is like 10 15k more than the model s you're thinking this is 190 it's a base maybe i mean if it's if it if they're smart it won't be 190 but it probably will be easy in the six figures for the base version of this thing 
Uh, Crazy. But it will probably be really, really firm. It will probably be really well made. It will probably be really fast. And we'll probably have lots of storage because Lucid did that really well with the, with the cars. Yeah, mm-hmm. true. Yeah, I mean, I think this is going to, I think it looks great from this. Uh, the one thing that worries me, since there is a wrap around it, how glossy like the quote unquote grill might be. It does look like there's a little lip in there. So maybe the whole front trunk pops up. Do you know how like the Ford F-150 versus the Rivian front trunk yeah. is like a- way, th- way deeper. It's deeper. It's not just that it's deeper. It's that the front the f- access to it like the Rivian, you have to go up and over a lip. It's like where, a tub. Yeah, yeah, versus, yeah exactly. Like a, like a big a tub you look down in. And then the F-150, the tr- the hood goes between the lights. So when it picks up, there's like a slot oh, yeah. into it. Like a shelf. This looks like that might kind of be like that between the lights. Maybe that's where the, the trunk picks up. But there's also another line. So maybe just not at all. The headlights look pretty good on this I too. I think the headlights look so good, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, it looks way better in this than like smushed down in the, yeah. the sedan style. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think, think the the reason they're making this is pretty obvious. These sell sure. more. Like the there's a famous Lamborghini story where like they're they're selling a couple hundred cars a year, and then they come out with the Urus, which is an SUV, and then America goes, oh, finally, I can buy a Lamborghini and not be lacking back seats. And that thing basically kept their business afloat. Like the Urus is the most common thing they sell. If you look at Porsche sales numbers, I'm sure the Cayenne and the Macan are probably half their sales. That's like Mm -hmm. how they make their money in the Mm -hmm. US. So Lucid, notoriously struggling to make money, selling very, very expensive cars. If they want to make some more money and stay afloat, they should at least offer an SUV and America can decide if they want to buy this one too or not. I mean, yeah, yeah. Americans love giant cars. Yeah. If you can't absolutely destroy something walking through a crosswalk, we don't really <laughs> want it. So, like, Luce yeah. is on the right track. I was just going to say, when I was in Iceland last week, I saw one total F-150. <laughs> That's yeah. Just, like, and when I was in Texas, I saw one every minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of Jeeps there, and there's, like, a lot of off-road vehicles, but F-150s are, like, very American. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. So, the, the, yeah, a lot of, like, off-roadish vehicles and yeah. then a lot of really tiny cars like Citroëns. Well, yeah, and Iceland, like, a lot of people doing it, there's all those different travel agencies where you rent, like, some sort of semi-off-roading thing to yeah. drive around, right, yeah. and go into all the different... <laughs> I rented a view. Jeep and got it stuck in the mud. Nice. So. That's pretty classic, though. That's yeah. what you got to do with yeah, a Jeep. exactly. Did you guys see the Lucid, like, car play video that I tweeted? Yeah. So, there's this video, if you haven't seen it, uh, of... We, we mentioned this in a previous episode, but Lucid finally caved and added wireless CarPlay to the Lucid Air. And if you do enable it, it's this it's like this little square cutout on the second screen and it it's just boom. You yeah. got CarPlay well, on this little window on and the, the screen. And the reason that's weird is because the second screen in the Lucid is like a flat 90 like degree on one side and, and then the other slopes. side curves down almost like a yeah. like dolphin fin yeah. on its side. Yeah. So for the longest time Lucid did not offer Android Auto or CarPlay. It's their own software. They tried mm-hmm. to do everything, navigation, car features, charging, all that stuff. And you know, people keep asking for CarPlay, so they finally caved and did it. Uh, partially probably because they're a little desperate. Well, because eighty percent of people wouldn't buy a car without car. Clearly, yes. This is the everyone knows. Eighty <laughs> percent is the fact of of life. Eighty percent. Uh, and you look at this video, and there is a reason why, but it is unbelievably ugly. It's so slow, first of all, because turns out there's a bug with CarPlay where if you're recording video with your iPhone and that iPhone is also casting for wireless CarPlay, it will perform terribly. So as he goes through the menu, it's just like stuttering and oh. slow because he's recording on the iPhone that's using CarPlay. But even just that's looking not at fair. It, I yeah, didn't realize that. That's a problem with like CarPlay, but that's just also like it's it's just bad. <laughs> I guess that scenario <laughs> it should never really be happening though. Recording video on the phone that's sending CarPlay. Uh, you should be able to do that. I think is that a hot take? Hand your hand your iPhone to your passenger. He okay, I'm glad video. you I'm glad you said that part. But he should uh, be able to take a video. Okay. I feel like it's or a picture. You're driving past something like Niagara Falls. You're like, oh my man, like take a picture. Uh, we're gonna set the next navigation point real quick, but take a video of Niagara Falls as we pass by. And suddenly your car play is like crawling to a halt. <laughs> oh, that just happens. That's just the way it is. I yeah. think it should be hot take. The iPhone's powerful <laughs> enough to hot, fix that. Hot take. Yeah. I should be able to film other people while I'm driving. <laughs> yeah, your phone should be whatever. That, <laughs> no, that, just kidding. But the idea. I'm just looking at this video. I'm just like the the way they cut this window into that like arced display. Mm-hmm. It's just like it's such a it looks like an afterthought. For sure. And yeah. it just reminded me again why I don't think car companies are very good at making software. Yeah. Even if they are, I 
a California startup, they're still not great at it. Yeah, I feel like there's got to be some way to just be like, here's the square, but like match the background. Because in that video or a different, vi- no, no, I think it was that video. He was like, well, if you set the background of everything to black, it yeah. looks less it bad, looks less but you terrible. can still totally tell. The problem is, is since the bottom left corner is a perfect right angle, it fits perfectly there. But then the top starts curving. So you can see the curve go over with the background that's not CarPlay, connect to the corner of the square that is CarPlay, and then pixels. continue to go over into another triangle. Well, you know what's interesting screen. to me? You remember last year at WWDC when Apple did their biggest vaporware thing they've done in a long time? And <laughs> they were like, huge. CarPlay is now going to be in every car mm-hmm. and we're going to make it a platform that you can build on top of. And Whatever then literally that? nothing. Well, and that zero. Happened. In that demo, it, it was, was like, like it was taking over like seven different totally random screens on the car and yeah. like flowing perfectly. It had yeah. like your calendar up on over in the passenger seat and yeah. it had a call oh. and it had the map and you're And that was a year ago because yeah. WWC is about to happen again and we have seen not one single thing. Yeah. No cars have done. And that was like a that was like twenty to thirty minutes of the presentation. I was fascinated by that. And you know what that just reminded me of? The this this one up's the lucid, the worst ever car play implementation I've ever seen. And that is the Ferrari 296 GTB. If you do CarPlay in the Ferrari, <laughs> the Ferrari only has one screen, which is your tachometer, <laughs> your speed, and everything. And if you do CarPlay on the Ferrari, oh, no. <laughs> your tack disappears, and you just have CarPlay Man. in the middle. It's just oh, like no. big icons, and your speedometer is gone. <laughs> Him. Which <laughs> you know, in a Ferrari, That's it doesn't dangerous. matter. Right? It's dangerous in a Ferrari to not have a speedometer. You know, it you doesn't can, matter how fast you're going if you're driving a Ferrari. You're you gonna get pulled very, over anyway. Very quickly lose track. It's of really going to take that out of my list of next cars to buy. Yeah, That's so crazy. <laughs> if you were thinking about getting that car, just yeah. know that CarPlay disappears your tech. But, Holy hell! But yeah. I, and then also in in that Apple thing, what they saying like. Your speedo will be in CarPlay. Your tack will be in Car. Like yeah, but yeah. now it's just like. Yeah, it would have been in that car. It would have been really interesting if you could fully take over the display and show me the range, show me the speed, show me the things that the tack was going to show me. Yeah. And CarPlay stuff. Well, that was the idea, right? It Mm -hmm. was supposed to be like every EV manufacturer makes different kinds of screens and they're different shapes. And so then you can like kind of build on top of CarPlay to add your own elements and all this stuff. But like, I think that Polestar and maybe maybe Volvo or something, which is Polestar, were like the only manufacturers that they said they had on board. And then they also just never did anything. Well, but, and it's even interesting. Polestar those are Android automotive too. Yeah, it makes yeah, sense because they they're also doing- also have CarPlay now. Mm. And that makes sense because they're doing Android automotive. So it's going to be a screen that's already similar to like what Direct Android Android. Auto and like CarPlay yeah. are looking for, which are rectangles. Yeah. It's just like- Right. Yeah. This is This comes back to also when we talked to RJ about like, why do you not do CarPlay in the Rivian? And his answer was, well, we want to control everything. And that makes sense. Uh, probably because if you do have weird size screens like the Lucid, you don't really want to make it look horrible with CarPlay. And now do we see what that looks like? Mm-hmm. But also like the Rivian has two rectangular screens. Yeah. Why Which not? Perfect perfect for why it. not just have an option? I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Uh, they want to be Tesla, I guess. Brought me to this question of, would you rather, though, have a poor-looking CarPlay or Android Automotive or just none at all? Like, if you had a bad-looking... Like, I see that Lucid, and it looks terrible, but if I had a Lucid, I would still use CarPlay on it because I think CarPlay <laughs> maps or Android Automotive uh, maps or ways is just better. It depends on how slow and glitchy the built-in one is. Exactly. It depends on how bad I, the built-in is. Okay, let's say it works fine looks bad but you still get like you get your ways and everything like that like i i couldn't imagine buying a rivian like mm-hmm. i really want a rivian but i'd be so sad buying a rivian and then having to buy a car mount to put my phone with ways <laughs> yeah next to this giant capable <laughs> yeah. screen it's that like can the, put f- ways on it's it the most just, common thing i see in tesla model threes is someone putting like a little attachment for magsafe <laughs> to put their phone right next to the huge screen that's already it's there because people want to use ways and they yes. want to use whatever their phone looks like yeah i yeah. mean i think these these like new tech well we call them like tech car manufacturers that are very much like software forward like tesla yeah. rivian lucid while their gps is a thousand times better than a legacy manufacturer um they're still behind google maps and ways and yeah a- and apple maps. so the hierarchy is <laughs> they're closer carplay and android auto when they work well are at the top mm-hmm. then tesla rivian lucid with their built-in systems with no CarPlay and no Android Auto right underneath that. Mm-hmm. 
and this might be debatable, but then underneath that, all the cars that have absolute garbage Volkswagen. infotainment systems that you never even look at because yeah. you just use Android and Auto and Apple Mini. CarPlay. Yeah. <laughs> and the debate is, do you put those above or below Tesla, Rivian, and Lucid? Below. Below? Yeah. Because I think a lot of people go, I just want CarPlay. I don't really like that Tesla's oh, can't yeah, you're I, saying. Oh, I see what you're it saying. Has a, uh, yeah. Yeah. And then the one know. that doesn't have that, with its only its own GPS system, is like in the trash the can worst. behind the building. Yeah, the yeah, Bentley I'm reviewing yeah. right now. <laughs> oh man, that's a rough one. To yeah, have. it's bad. I think wireless CarPlay helps a lot, but for some reason, like needing to plug your, I mean, it's good to that it charges your phone when you have it wired, mm -hmm. but it feels kind of hacky to like plug in your phone and then have like your phone appear on the screen. I guess I have it plugged in on mine, and it's not. It's not just like your phone's plugged in. It's still its completely own Android yeah. Auto, like UI and everything. And right. I, I love it in mine. I wish it was wireless yeah. just because I'd rather put my phone somewhere else and not have a big wire hanging out yeah, all over the place. But like, I still, car like Android Auto is my favorite. I'm, I totally love it. It was like, I made sure my car, which unfortunately Subaru took forever to put it in, but like I had to make sure the car I bought had Android Auto. That was like my yeah. number one thing. Are you 80% of users? Well, it's Android Auto, not yeah. Android Auto. Ninety percent. All these cars that I'm reviewing, it's like the second I get in, my first question is, does it have Android Auto or, or Apple CarPlay? And then the second question is, where do I put my phone, and can I see my phone where I have to put it? Right. So a lot of them, oh, like, yeah. like right now, the Tesla has the wireless charger right below the screen, and my phone like sits up like nicely on the wireless charger, and I can still see it. Yeah. So I actually don't mind that there's no CarPlay because my phone is right there facing me. On something like the Ionic 6, it is like underneath on this like sideways yeah. wireless charger, so you cannot see your phone. Yeah. So in that case, I'm like, you better have some way to use wireless CarPlay or yeah. like Android Auto or something like that. And they have wired, so I'd need the cable, but mm. that's like the the hierarchy of like how I go into a car. Rivian's experience. kind of like in the middle. It's yeah. on your like armrest, is which it is under like, the armrest. It's it's on top of. Uh, it's like at the front of yeah. your armrest. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. There's one that's like under the armrest. Was that the? Um, There's a bunch. I think the EQ. The EQS. But, yeah. Yeah. All of those, if it was just on the screen, would be better. Exactly. Yep. Like, yeah, okay. I understand what they're probably trying to do, where they're like, you're not supposed to use your phone while you're driving anyway, put it in the charger. But if they had wireless CarPlay, that would solve both problems. Yep. You're not using your I phone, the and you would get the stuff on the display. Yeah. And we're assuming the reason they don't want to do this is gathering information, correct, through their own map there, software? It's twofold. Yeah. One is, you're a car company. You make your own software. You gave the user the best experience you can, where to charge, how to be efficient, what yeah. routes to use. And if you offer this thing that is CarPlay, suddenly you're just giving up all the control over whatever Apple thinks should be on that screen. And the second is, yes, maybe you do something with that data, you use that data, you sell ads, whatever happens to that data. Um, but I think the control is the one that they're all saying forwardly yeah. because that makes the most sense. You want to offer the best experience for the user. How will Apple CarPlay know how much range is left on my car and what I'm going to get to? I think that might be an That's upcoming feature because a lot of EVs, yeah. as you're going to the charger, they'll go, all right, you're five minutes away. I'm going to start preconditioning the battery for fast charging. If I go use Android Auto, the car doesn't know to do that. Yeah. Right? So those types of things like make the experience of an EV better if the software is actually good. And I think that's what Apple was hoping would happen when they introduced this quote unquote platform that uh, I don't what think I was hoping actually would exists. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they're still working on it. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I just like that that one. Apple went from that. It's like any screen, anywhere, totally integrated. And the first thing we see is Apple trying to fit a triangle block into the <laughs> square block of the Lucid. Maybe, yeah. Maybe Apple is done with it and just no car company wants to do it. Yeah. That's because why would they give up their whole thing? to some other company who could yeah. just push a software update and do something they don't like. They want to be a platform. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Apple well, car incoming. Yeah. Uh, I guess the <laughs> Apple car will be the one. A hundred percent of people will like that car because it has CarPlay. <laughs> what if the Apple car is not real and it's really just the platform that they were building the whole time? They were just using like a body of a car so they could build a software platform. That would be a lot of work. Yeah, but making cars just is make the rest of the car work. <laughs> just make the rest just of the car. Put wheels on it. <laughs> How hard could it be? <laughs> uh, do you guys know about the USSV Rhino GX? 
No, you're going to have to explain that one. It's like, it's the new, I might not even be that new anymore. It's like, it, it's one of those cars that you have to get like special ordered and it's only for, bill- it's an SUV. It's like completely bulletproof. I don't even oh. know if the windows go down. Okay. Um, it's $300,000. Uh, I've seen something like this. There's no CarPlay. Yeah. I was just looking it up. I was curious. <laughs> don't want it. Yeah. I was going to get it, but now I don't want it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Unless my phone can go right below the screen. And then I can see my phone screen still. You know, it's so funny. This car, uh, despite being $300,000 and being luxuried out, has the most like used Alpine media player I've ever yeah, seen. That it's actually like, sounds right. Does it? Yeah, yeah those extremely oh, expensive companies that just like want to m- be made for like super, super rich people. But they're also like um, they're also like an oldish company. They're never going to think about software. I yeah, think this I just, is a newish company. I don't know. That I just developed more. a theory. Yeah. The more expensive the car, the worse the software. No, because the Maybach had really good software, didn't it? Not really. Never mind. No, the yeah. Maybach had terrible and software. And keep going up in price. It gets worse and worse. Yeah. Like the a McLaren, you don't even think about it. Like it's just HVAC. That's, <laughs> that's all it does. If you pull the, up that map, you'll be really unimpressed. So you're saying the Mini Cooper had the best software. <laughs> Yeah, that's a <laughs> twerking are dog. Expensive, <laughs> if you go up, good. I guess there's like a curve where it's like at a super low price, there's nothing good. And then at a middle price, you get like CarPlay or you get yeah. a Tesla or something like that. And then you go to like more expensive, like six figure cars EQS. and like EQS and like Bentleys and sports like, cars. Oh. And they go right back to the bottom. We could talk for a long time about car software. But in order to avoid doing that, we should take a break. So after trivia, let's do some trivia. <laughs> All right. Trivia question number two. Going back a bit. WhatsApp was founded in February of 2009 by co-founders Brian Acton and Jan Coom. I think is how you pronounce his name. I don't know. They were famously bought by Meta in 2014 for $1.5 billion. But before any of this, what major tech company did they both work for? Hmm. Before they made WhatsApp. Before they made WhatsApp. I remember the them working for a major tech company but not which one they work mm. dang. dang dang i don't startups <laughs> we'll come back after the break all right welcome back um we are going to end this episode with uh marquez is now the proud designer of a new product we released some shoes with adams the other day and I have a couple questions for him because uh, he's usually the reviewer and now he's the reviewee, I guess. You're in the hot seat now, pretty yes, much. Yes, sure. So like, like, can we really quickly go through like how all of this came to? Because I don't think people who watched our videos yet know yeah. exactly how it started or even like how long this has been going on for. I can tell the abbreviated Yeah, do you remember story? how you first got in contact with them? I do. Um... 2020, I bought an Adams mask. Mm-hmm. That's the first thing I ever interacted with Adams uh, at the very beginning. And it was great. It was super comfortable. That became like the default for me. Wore it everywhere. Loved it. Got a couple more. Put one in my car. Put one in my backpack. Um, <clears throat> so I loved Adams already. I didn't really think too much about the shoes because I already had shoes that I liked and I didn't get any new shoes. But then Alexis Ohanian connected us again, said, hey, like Adams, you guys make good stuff. Marquez, you like Adams products. You guys should collaborate on a custom shoe. That was Alexis's idea yeah. at the wow. beginning. Yeah. For so people that is... know that don't know Alexis Ohanian is the founder of Reddit. Yes. And the <laughs> husband to Serena Williams. Yeah. And an all around great dude. Uh, and an investor us, in Adam. And an investor in Adam, yes. of course, and many other <laughs> that's things. That's where the connection. And so he mentions this idea and I'm like, that's that's a good idea. I and I I tried some Adam shoes and I liked them. They were comfortable. And then the question came up of like, well, what do you mean by custom? Because this opportunity has existed before. Putting my name on an almost finished product and just shipping it and calling it a day wasn't really that appealing to me. And got in touch with Adams and they were basically like, we love this idea. Blank slate. What do you want to make? And I was like, whoa. Whoa. Yeah. What do, like, like really from the beginning? Like a whole new shoe? And they were super down. And so that became like the sort of base point. This was back in 2020 mm-hmm. where it was like, all right, let's just do, because I'm not a shoe designer. <laughs> the way I use products is I know what I like and don't like about other shoes that I've, like any product. I, I like some certain things. I don't like certain other things. So my job was to put together all the things that I liked about some shoes, all the things that I didn't like about some shoes. And then we'll start to 
put that in one place, create designs, and just start fresh from there. Yeah, I even rem- two years ago. I I remember back then, the first meeting wasn't even fully like, okay, we're doing this right now. It was like they wanted to come in and they grilled you with questions for like two hours to make sure that this like seemed like an appropriate yeah. collaboration. And I really like respected that back then because it's so easy, like you said, to just say, hey, we are a company, you are influencer. Yeah. Please slap your name and let's make money. Yeah, it was I think very different. The difference is most of the time that comes from the marketing department. Sure. And I think this time it came from product people. And mm-hmm. I, uh, when I product person talks to another product person and you can really appreciate a product together, that language is pretty, like it clicked pretty fast. So we both knew what we wanted to do, what we wanted to make and what our priorities would be like from the beginning. And God, we must have like over a hundred different design drawings and random possible versions of the shoe, colorways, materials, shapes, silhouettes, styles, all kinds of stuff yeah. that we went through. I think actually when Adam and David first joined the team, one of the first things in Slack that got posted was this like PDF of like yeah. 50 different <laughs> shoe designs images. Do you like? And it was just like, they came in and immediately we're all like debating which ones we like the best. And yeah. there were some really, really sick I like, ones. I like 26, 54, and 59. Oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I like 9, 21, and 20, 23. And yeah. This was like our second week too. So I'm like, do I have input? Because yeah. those are kind of fire. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was sick. And it, like everybody was picking different numbers too because there were just a lot of different color combinations and styles and like highs and like mid and like different straps or laces and whatnot. And they, yeah. they're all really sick. I've really learned that you can mess up a shoe. You can go really, really far in one direction and it will be a bad shoe. Because yeah. a product is a, colla- a, a product is a bunch of different decisions that you make. And if you make a bunch of wrong decisions and flip the switch the wrong way a bunch of times, you can get a shoe that's just like has no support at all it, or is just bad. Well, we had that one that came in and you're like, this is so sick. And then you wore it and like a couple steps, the like whole sides were like collapsing in on each other and making these giant creases out that looked like bird wings almost. And it was like, oh, this yeah. is not going to work at yeah. all and complete redesign after that. Yeah. So that that was the beginning. We kind of went back and forth. I mean, I can describe it as basically the classic, like me saying what I want, getting a prototype, me going, ah, I see. And then describing a bunch of changes that I want and then going back and forth, getting a prototype. Ah, okay. <laughs> Here's how that looks. And then just going through that process a bunch of times. That's the basic skeleton of how it went. But it was like, we had to make decisions to optimize for comfort. There are decisions to optimize for aesthetics, to optimize for cost, to optimize for everyday wear versus like, this isn't going to be like a sport specific shoe, but it is a high top. And most high tops are a little more specific use if they're not like everyday wear. So there's a, there's a ton of decisions that go into something like this. Um, and even price, like I was, the price is 189 and mm-hmm. listen, no one thinks that's a cheap shoe. Like it's it not. is not a cheap shoe. It is mm-hmm. it is a quality premium shoe. But if you look at Adam's other shoes, which are entirely different, they are a very similar price. I think they're like one sixty, one seventy. So to think of a, a shoe with materials they've never made before, high top. Their other ones are lows. Their other ones are basically one color. Everything matches. These are leather or synthetic leather, synthetic leather and all sorts of material. Mic- yeah, and yeah. to make something like that, that's then only like. Fifteen dollars plus, you want to throw like influencer tax on if you want to call it that. Like, I think it's pretty impressive, and and a lot of shoes are similarly priced. Again, I'm someone who buys shoes on sale. I spend sixty bucks on shoes. It's mm-hmm. expensive, but like, I don't think it's that wildly wildly yeah. priced. I think my my main thing that sort of encapsulates all of it is I really want people to wear these because I've been wearing so many prototypes that had so many flaws, and now that we have the final version, and I'm like wearing them like basically every day now, mm-hmm. I'm like man. When people get these, they're going to really appreciate them if they actually wear them. And so if you just like get them, look at them, or just look at a picture online, you're like, oh, that's not worth the price. But when you put them on, you're like, dang, these are really light. These are really comfortable. And these are like decent looking. And I kind of think they look sick, but that's just like, because I designed them. So of course I think I, they look sick. Uh, then then you'll appreciate it more. So I think, I, I hope people wear them. And I'm considering, not sure if I'm gonna be able to do this, but I'm considering wearing them every single day for the next year and seeing how that goes. And I'll have the pair that was worn the most 
with however many thousands of steps I take and however many miles I walk. You're like that guy with the Model S, the first one to drive like 100,000 yeah. miles. Yeah. yeah. I will. I, I am the one most well suited to do this because I've already had mine for several days that are perfect and we'll see how long I can wear them. I'll hold you to that. Yeah. I want to. I want to see that. I want a picture every single All day. All the rest of my I shoes want will start to get lonely. Pictures. Yeah, you know, I, but I, that makes it easy to pack because I don't have to wear. I'll probably wear other shoes for sports-specific things, obviously. Okay, I'm yeah, not going to golf in these, but, like, this is this is my mission. We'll see how it goes. We did actually design them to fit perfectly in the Moonwalkers. Um, <laughs> no, we did not. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We did, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. David and I contacted <sighs> Sidra and Wilcox separately to make oh, sure that they fit perfectly uh, on I that. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Very important fact. I mean, they are soft. This is there's another random fact. I've had like a uh, heel issue called plantar fasciitis for like four or five months. I have that too. I have it on my Same. right my right foot. And so Weaklings. the <laughs> the help that I got from the podiatrist was like this insert to put in all of my shoes. So I've been taking the insert out and putting it in the new pair of shoes that I wear every day. I have a pair in my cleats and every time I put a pair in my shoes, <laughs> I take it out, put it in the shoes and wore those shoes for the day. These are the only shoes that I don't have to put the inserts in because oh. the heel is actually soft enough and cups and supports well enough and has arch support just enough with the heel toe drop that I don't wear them in these shoes, only these. So if you go to a podiatrist, you can get a doctor's note. Yeah. And your insurance will cover the purchase of. Yeah, your podiatrist will be like, <laughs> your just get these ones. super feet inserts or <laughs> these two five ones. What's it going to be? Because it's the same price. <laughs> so it's uh, it's up to you. No, I, well, I, I think they came out great. Well, really so so the next thing I want to ask you, though, is now mm -hmm. uh, for yesterday, it released. Today's Wednesday. We're recording. When he re this got released yesterday, Marquez sat in front of his desk <laughs> for the entire day. I That's think true. every single person in the office <laughs> was like, dude, are you doing OK? Like, uh, yeah, it was just like. Phone, computer, phone, computer, phone, computer, back and forth, back and forth, answering, retweeting, like looking at, the, you watched probably every video that came out everyone's. about it. Yeah. Everyone. How's it feel? How's it feel to be in the hot seat? It's funny. I, I get it now. I get the stress of like, sometimes I'll get an email from a product manager who's like, you can tell they're stressing out about the videos that came out about their product. And to me, I'm just like, look, I'm making my video. Like, it's one video. Um, everyone's going to have thoughts about the thing. We'll probably agree on a lot of things. But now being on the other side, we're like, I want to see what everyone thinks about every little thing. Yes, I I got a lot of screen time yesterday <laughs> between YouTube videos and people did unboxings, people did reviews, kind of, and also just like showcasing them and just like checking them out, which is super cool. Uh, I got to hear basically what everyone thought about every single feature, about the laces, about the looks, about the bags that they got, uh, which we might want to do more of, about the actual materials and the lightweight of the shoe. Uh, super fun videos. I'll shout out a few because they were fun. Linus did a video. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> so Linus good. did a great video. Yeah. Reviewing it, uh, kind of poking fun at us, uh, but as a sandal. He reviewed yeah. it as a sandal, which was hilarious. And he did his like his uh, his labs thing where he measures it and yeah. does some like vertical leap testing. Blah blah blah. It was all obviously kind of like a extended April Fool's Day yeah. fun yeah, video. Yeah. But it was, it was really super, long too. It was, it was great. I enjoyed so it. So well made. And yeah. to Linus's team's credit, which we all know they can make videos very quickly, like these shoes to influencers got out like last week. They have not yeah. had a lot of times with these. We've yeah. this got pushed to the edge and they made an incredible video. It was video. a really good yeah. video. It was yeah. awesome. So that was super yeah. cool. Even to an see. intro. They redid the yeah, intro. Did that. <laughs> they did a Linus intro. How long were they sitting on that? Do you think they were like working on that as That's soon as they found point. out about the, the project? Email. There's no way you make that now. Now nothing made our intro and so did Linus. Yeah. So there are three versions of the MKVHD like intro. Like genuinely well. We have animated. to do a waveform one. <laughs> and they all stole <laughs> yeah, 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 one. And they all stole Ellis's audio. No, Linus didn't attempt the audio. Yeah, he just took he just yours, used right? The existing. Oh, he did. I'm That's what I'm sure. saying. It had yeah. the boing. And yeah. The, yeah, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> anyway, anyways, Linus's video is great. I also That's do wonder bad. if when so the Adam's team is clearly fashion people. I don't know if they understand our like tech meme dumb that's going on here so i'm just like wondering them seeing linus of 15 million yeah. subscriber page and then seeing that and being like i don't know how to think about this when we were watching all of the videos i think the the really fun thing was that everyone that we sent it to did it like it was a regular video that they would normally make mm -hmm. and seeing everyone doing their style of video but with this shoe was yeah, just fun. really funny. And like fun. in a really fun yeah. way too. Zach had like fake legs in his short <laughs> yeah. that he like pulled <laughs> yeah. up. Zach's video. I was nervous that Zach was going to take a knife to it. 
Which was uh, uh, so. that would have been the second most extreme thing after Dave 2D painted an entire shoe yeah. Yeah. from top to bottom in teal and white yeah. and then did an unboxing. He kind of he basically pranked me. He yeah. got he, he pranked yeah. you. He got me good. I, I was behind the camera getting your reaction. Yeah. And like I just assumed it was gonna be pretty normal. Dave was like, oh my god. I was like, wow, Dave, thanks for hyping us up. That's a really intense. And then Marquez is like, wait. Wait, what is that? And like, I got scared on the side. I was like, did something happen? Did we send them the wrong shoes? What's going know. on? And I, because I couldn't see it. it yeah. was, he got you pretty good, but he got me. Dave had a great funny. one. Becca's video was Becca's was awesome. Yeah. The, yep. the best part about hers, other than the transitions, was her just spinning the sneaker for like 20 seconds to make sure As the, the video outro was to, exactly two, two minutes and 51, um, 51, 51 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was awesome. Also, sh- shout out to the Jersey girl. I, I just am. I just am. I just am. Yeah, lots of really good stuff. Well, I'm going to link as many as I can in the show notes. Shout out to everybody who's who's just messaged me about them. Even if you didn't make anything, I got lots of useful feedback about them. Uh, it's been pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Yeah, and we're looking forward to them getting in everybody else's hands to see people that aren't friends reviewing them, checking them out, feedback, stuff like that. And yeah, yeah. I'm excited. Should we talk about how they run slightly big? If, pe- a- if people are going to order them from the podcast? Worth mentioning. So there's a size chart on Adams, but a lot of people don't click that. They just like order yeah. the normal size. If you are curious about sizing, they run a little big, yeah. meaning if you're typically a 10, for example, I would order a nine and a half yeah. in these. Um, they're obviously stretchy laces and you can go too small and be fine. I'd rather be too small, but I would take a half size off your normal size. Especially if you're like between two, definitely pick the smaller smaller one of the two. Um, and when you do get them laces being elastic, by the way, Adam's laces are like the best thing. I just found out you can order them by themselves. I'm probably going to order like 10 pairs just for all of my other shoes. But mine, mine actually felt a little tight, a little long, but a little tight. But once you loosen it up with all the laces, they stick really well. And then. Being able to slip on a high top is wild. Low key, this is probably the first ever slip on high top because of the laces. Like there are other high tops and you could loosen up your laces and then slip them on and then tie them. But these, uh, you can actually- If you have to tie it, it's not a slip on. Right, this might be low key, if you want to call it a tech feature, the first ever slip on high top. Hmm. Just throwing it out there. What about the Balenciagas though? Who's that? (laughs) There we go. That's it. Who? (laughs) Who? Who? But yeah, I heard um I heard <laughs> two two five one two point is gonna be uh replicating like a croc. Who would have? Oh sorry, what well, and I have been talking about that on the side <laughs> yet. <Udo. laughs> Didn't realize you weren't privy to these conversations. <laughs> no, yeah, we we I love what we made, obviously, because I yeah, obviously. <laughs> but, um, I hate kids. what we made. I'm excited, yeah, to get this in the hands of people. There's a billboard in Times Square right now of uh of the shoes Did that's you know that? pretty amazing yeah that's yeah. amazing and that's also really cool because brandon and vin worked really hard on all those photos yeah. and i'm yeah. really happy that they have a photo up and they're like yeah. that's that's a bucket list kind of thing yeah it's really cool it's almost like the funny story i know billboards don't convert sales because they're billboards yeah and this is an online website yeah. so like it doesn't really work that way but the billboard was live like a day before release. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> one person, only one person noticed. <laughs> went to Times Square and went, wait a second, and tweeted a picture of the billboard at me the night before the shoes came out. And I was like, oh my God, it's out. It's our embargo is broken. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so what is going on? Uh, is, but, in the most epic way. I know. Yeah. And, and it's we just are a suing huge them. billboard. And literally, it was totally fine. Nobody, it, it's more of just like the pride of just like, because there's 10 million billboards in Times Square. You just kind of get that moment where you're like, all right. This feels pretty real. It's really physical, which is cool. Yeah. So, yeah, it's out there. Any ideas for what you'd want to do for a version two? I mean, now that I've seen Dave paint them teal, I think you got to think about other colorways. That's like a pretty obvious evolution of 251. We got to start with the obvious red and black, but that feels like a pretty obvious. There is some cool like blue and orange prototype. Like uh, a lot of photos we saw early that looked really sweet. One, they, they... Colored it after like a McLaren that we had done mm. a video on, and it looked sick. Your papaya. I, I get why it's that's not MKBHD colors, but ooh, that looked yeah. really good. Yeah, yeah. There are a lot of good looking prototypes that we didn't make, so so that's out there. Um, 
I'm glad it's, I'm glad all of the two years of work. This is the funny thing, because we make a YouTube video and we have this idea in our head and within five days it's out to the world and it's really satisfying to get that immediate feedback. This one was like, we had an idea 75 weeks ago. Yeah. And we're finally getting it out this week, which is crazy. Yeah. So yeah. it's out there now. Yeah. All right. Trivia time. <laughs> All right, in 1994, IBM combined the PDA and the mobile phone into one device, creating what is widely considered to be the first smartphone. On top of having a 4.7-inch touchscreen, it also had email, fax, and pager capabilities. I might be really wrong. I, that's, I, we, we wrote the same thing, just based off what you said. Okay. I think we wrote the same thing. <laughs> Reminder, it is manufactured by IBM. The international business machine. I'm definitely wrong. What was the name yeah, of this device? Yeah, now I think I'm wrong, but I still think we have the same answer. IBM. Uh, but I don't know what else to put. Like I don't. Exactly. We um, have. We don't right, have I'm the same answer. Yeah. All right. 1994. I know that's what I'm. That's my thing. That's I wasn't a born long yet. time ago. That was the only part of it that ChatGPT got wrong. It said it was released in '93, which it it wasn't. Oh, wow. ChatGPT. We're like trash GPT. I'm sorry. <laughs> Am I, didn't, I, I right? didn't mean it. Am I right? Flip them. Yeah, I'm wrong. Oh. Uh, Andrew and what I did it? in fact say the same thing. Palm Pilot. Palm. Yeah. I said the blackjack, which is also wrong. But it, yeah. Do you, do you remember the Blackjack? No. no. It was like a PDA slash early smartphone that competed with the BlackBerry. Who was it by, though? I don't remember. I just assumed, that's why I, I thought it might have been I was thinking of like BlackBerry, but that's got to be like <clears throat> 2000. This might have right? been... I Blackjack this, is Samsung. Samsung? Okay. Oh. It, it was like a BlackBerry. It had a keyboard, and it was like yeah. pretty cool. Palm Pilot. So, Are you in closest wins? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, closest out going over. <laughs> Um, I had a Palm Pilot for like all of elementary and middle school. I was that weird kid In who for some school? reason. Yeah, I was like, I don't want to use like Are a normal planner agenda. Like I want to use a Palm Pilot. Um, wow. Rocked it. Uh, no, the correct <laughs> answer is the IBM Simon. Oh. Um, the IBM never heard Simon. Of I just looked it up. The first Palm Pilot was 1997. Mm. That's pretty close. But Damn. that was by Palm. That was, uh, it was called, yeah, Palm I wasn't sure. and they called it the Palm Pilot Personal. That's a lot of so, alliteration. This thing had an RJ11 connector built into it too, yes. meaning that you could take your cell phone, yeah. plug it into your landline connection, yes. and it would become a landline. That's awesome. Also, uh, $900 in 1994 was $1,800 today. That's Fold it's money. It's the Samsung Fold, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this, this thing looks like the, just like the quintessential old black cell phone. What was the one you did on the Motorola? Uh, oh, uh, I had the original. What, like, yeah. The one on RetroTech? Yeah. yeah, that was a Motorola. Yeah. Um, Just like name. straight black antenna, giant ear cup, but rather than buttons, it has like a super narrow, Dynatech. super green, Dynatech. yeah, the Dynatech. Yeah. yeah. Uh, touch screen and like, it just has numbers and some like little folders on the bottom. Yep. Yeah, so you need a stylus to use that touch okay. screen, which is hilarious, like putting a stylus on your phone. And I don't know if you noticed, but that right bezel is so it's much bigger giant. than the left yeah. bezel. This thing's got to be yeah. almost like a foot tall. Oh, look at there's the this is it compared to a, a like iPhone. iPhone 5. Yeah. It's probably double the height of it. Yeah. And the same width. All right, second question. So WhatsApp was founded in 2009 by co-founders Brian Acton and Jan Coombe, I think. WhatsApp was famously bought by Meta in 2014 for $1.5 billion. But before any of this, what major tech company did they both work for? That was fast. Because <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I've heard the answer to this before but it wasn't s stored in my ssd <laughs> yeah it just got think, erased from local memory yeah just think if you're gonna make an app as bad as whatsapp what terrible platform are you gonna leave prior to that well that almost sounds like you i said might be platform. right platform that's a big hint that's messed up spin them flip them and read flip em. <laughs> okay <laughs> well i said google oh. i said aol I also said Google because I was like, yeah, 
Google would have made a really amazing <laughs> chat app and then, and then it got out. sold to Meta. <laughs> yep. The correct answer is... Yahoo! <laughs> oh, I was... Mm, I wanted to do that. So the score remains unchanged. Marquez with 14, Andrew with 9, David with 13. I didn't remember Marquez passing me. Because you were in Iceland. You were in Iceland. Did he get two points last week? I did. No, he, he I got, got a point. Yeah, and he got closer. Remember, you didn't. It was the one yeah. who gets closest without going over. And that was you only got one point. Were we tied before that? No, I got a point for being closer, and I got another point for getting the answer right. Oh, of a different question. Clearly, someone doesn't watch our podcast, David. <laughs> I was in Iceland. I, There's no podcast. There in aren't Iceland. podcasts in Iceland, Adam. <laughs> There's only Nordic casts. Vi- Viking cool. cast, Vicast. Mark has take us home. Either way, hey, listen. We wait, appreciate you guys. Wait, no. wait, wait. Andrew has 0.69 points a game. Nice. Right now, at this nice. very moment, yeah, shout right out to now. Andrew. That's <laughs> a solid out. average. Good batting average nice. right there. Nice. Uh, very nicely done. Anyway, okay, that's been it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening this week. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Waveform is produced by Adam Alina and Ellis Rovin for now until AI takes over. We're partnered with Vox Media Podcast Network and our intro outro music was created by Vane Sill. Mm-hmm.